Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Learn IT. Today we will be having another session for our new release of ServiceNow that is Utah. If you are new to the channel, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Learn IT. Please watch my videos till the end for complete information. I will walk you through in my personal developer instance and show how we can utilize these features. Okay, so let's move further. So you can see there are some of the features displaying in the screen. So we will start from one of the first feature that is dark theme. So let's see in our personal developer instance how this dark theme works. So this is my personal developer instance and now you can see currently we have normal theme activated. So currently no any dark theme is applied to this instance. So let's try to apply a theme on this instance. You can see currently a white screen is loaded. So we will apply dark theme here and see how our screen looks or how our instance looks. So we just have to go under this preference and then you can see there is an option called theme. So as soon as I clicked on theme, there is a default theme and a dark theme. So I will apply on dark theme. So this dark theme will be applied. You can see the dark theme is already applied and the look has completely changed. You can click on this incident and you can see how our form looks. Even the form, the dark theme will be applied. You can see it looks good also, right? So this is all about dark theme, how you can activate it and how you can see the changes it is on your uh, instance. All right. So this dark theme changes will be applied to many places like a list, forms, dashboard, knowledge, service catalog, virtual agent, client, VT, virtu, uh, virtual task board, visual task board, landing page. All right. So let's move to our next feature that is a uh, theme builder. So let's try to first uh, deactivate this dark theme from our preference. All right, we have deactivated the dark theme. Now what we will do is like our next feature is like theme builder. So we will move to our theme builder and see how we can create a theme. So previously uh, uh, we cannot create such kind of theme but in Utah ServiceNow has released some feature like a theme builder where you can create your own theme. So let's try to explore how this theme builder works. So we just have to type theme builder here. So you can see we have a theme builder displaying in the screen. Okay, so let's move further and see how this theme builder is utilized. So let's click on theme builder first theme builder uh, is loaded here and you can see there is some of the theme builder uh, home page is displayed and you can see here manager and editor is started displaying here you can manage your existing themes and any editor you can uh, uh, customize or edit your existing themes so let's try to create a sample theme here let's click on continue you have to provide your name here so i will give a name learn IT theme all right now what I will do is like I will select a primary color so I have selected uh, this green okay I will click on apply and I will click on next now we have secondary color choice as well. So I will choose secondary color as anything and I will click on next and you can see we can select a neutral brand color as well. So we can suppose I have applied this uh, red color. Click on next and now you can see we can add more additional colors but uh, we will see in another video how more additional colors can be added 
to that theme builder so uh, currently i am showing just how you can utilize theme builder and now you can see it will be looking like this and you can upload your logo as well uh, within this size or specifications provided and now i will click on next and you can select the font which you like to use for your instance so i like this cabin uh, one so i will click on next and here you can see we can uh, select the rounded one less rounded more rounded or square so i like the most rounded one because it uh, make a instance more uh, good so i will click on next and now you can see your three colors started displaying here and your uh, text and uh, round size of any box is displaying here so i will click on create theme so you can see our theme is created here and uh, this theme will look like this what all things is going to look this will look this will be looking these ways okay now we will see how we can apply this theme currently you can see the black border is set so we can just click on apply theme okay now you can see our theme is applied and now i will reload the form and see the changes you can see the theme is changed now and you can see how it looks like now theme is already changed and you can see this hover this color is also changed from default theme right you can see everything this hover the green color is setting so this way we can set our uh, themes and we can as well select our old theme like uh, we have already applied this uh, learn it theme and you can click on manager and you will see all the themes displaying here all right so we will again move to our default theme so that uh, i can show further other features so this way you can apply your theme builder uh, in your uh, instance uh, according to your uh, organization all right all right so let us reload this form and go back to our default theme so now let's talk about next uta features that is favorites grouping so that will enable users to group their favorites together and they can as well create the new custom groups so i will show you how this favorites grouping uh, can be created so you can see this is a favorite uh, displaying here so you can click all right so this is the favorites button where we can create our uh, custom favorites all right you can see as soon as i have clicked on that i can you can see we can create our custom group suppose i will create a new custom group for learn it learn it group and we can select the color for this group as well all right now i will click on save now you can see this is a group created and we can set a favorite for uh, these groups suppose i have clicked here and you can see we can define where we can add the groups see so there is already learn it group where this uh, this will this is created and now i will click on save edits you can see this uh, now this will be displaying under learn it group all right now i will click on save edit and you can see under learn it group we will be able to see self service incident and i will just uh, drop dra drop down and uh, drop close okay so you can see self service incident displaying under this custom group that is created under favorites all right so let's move to our next feature that is multi menu filtering all right so i will tell you what is multi menu filtering 
so we can find options from other menus under all results okay so i will show you how this works so suppose i will type here portal and you can see this all all result is started displaying and it it is searched in favorite section as well portal thing under favorites we were not having any result so it has displayed no result and in all result you can see from all, most many menus the options started displaying under portal okay so this this is the way how multi menu filtering works in utah all right so now we will talk about next feature that is history detail okay so how this works is like we can show workspace custom ui pages in the history tabs okay and many more things you can see in your history previously you you will not be able to see lot more things under history section so we can click on history detail and you can see more organized way you can see the details suppose currently you can see learn learn it incident flows incident notifications flow engine context everything system property email property everything is started displaying here all right so for uh, enabling this history uh, history detail thing you have to enable the property glide.ui.polaris.history.recording equal to all so everything will be tracked under this history details all right so now let's move to our next features so the next feature is very interesting so uh, what we call it as script editor all right so script editor we are seeing same kind of script editor displaying in inside a service now system so now they have modified some something under script editor all right so we will see what what things they have modified under script editor when we write any script under server side or client side so let's see how what they have created all right so let's move to our uh, code suppose we will open business rules under system definition we will click on business rules and now i will find some uh, script which is somewhat uh, large so that you will understand more clearly so suppose i will click on this cmdb dependent ci delete as you can see our business rule is loaded now i will show you the changes what is implemented as part of script editor so you can see this script editor has changed and you can see uh, some changes is done this is the code preview pane where we can preview our code and you can see here we have created a, a visualized uh, visualized code and you can see there is a coloring coloring uh, displayed here you can see this is black in color this is uh, another color and you can see this is displayed in green color so same way it will be working as a script editor so i was trying to get some bigger script so suppose uh, let me open this one okay you can see here this is also the another example where you can see the expanded or code preview pane you can see here this is the new thing which is introduced in uta features under scripting editor this is really very cool because you can see your code code can be previewed under this small section as well as you scroll down you can go to your particular lines of code where you want to make your changes all right so this is all about script editor all right so let's move to our next feature so these are all the features which i have covered just now dark theme theme builder favorites grouping multi menu filtering history detail script editor all right so now let's move to our next part that is flow designer so here we will see a separate thing here can see associated flows convert actions into a subflow support for stages priorities so i will show you how these all things has been changed in service now all right 
so let's move further and see how we can uh, make changes or apply those kind of changes or use these features in ServiceNow instance. All right, so let's move to our ServiceNow instance. Now I will click on flow and I will click on flow designer. All right, so now let's see we are already in flow designer and one of the feature was associated flows. What does this mean is like we can show action usage across flows and subflows. What does this mean is like suppose you are using an action. Suppose I am opening this action particular update details. All right. So what I will do is like suppose this is the action and there are a lot of actions already added. So now what I will do is like I will add more input here. Suppose this is variable three and I have added here and I will try to save. So it is successfully saved. Now what I will try to do is like publish. So I will show you what this this publish do is. As soon as I click on publish, you can see there are two flows, right? Uh, there are two flows uh, which is started displaying testing flow and testing flows one. So what does this indicate is like uh, this action is, has been utilized under these two flows. So whatever changes you are making to this action. So this is just providing you an information that this changes will be applied to both of the workflows. All right. So this is the information you will be getting using associated flows in flow designer. So this was the feature which was introduced in Utah. So I will save these details. All right. So this is all about associated flows. Now let's move to our next feature of flow designer that is convert actions into a flow. Right. So here we can convert our actions into a flow. So I will show you how we can do that. Suppose this is the flow. And now we can click on one and two. And now you can see I have already selected these two part uh, using this select multiple. And now I will click on this operation. So you can see there is an information started displaying here convert to a subflow. Okay, so now here you can see the message is started displaying. You cannot other. Uh, issues is found set flow variables cannot be put into a subflow. So this type of information you will get whether you can convert your uh, action into a subflow or not. All right. So now let's try to do some another thing here. Uh, if suppose we are doing this, we will try to do these actions. So here you can see there is an operation to create a subflow. See, so you go, you have got the option to create a subflow. So you can provide here test subflow. Right. And you can see there is a button started displaying here and we will click on convert to subflow. So this way you can convert your actions into a subflow within a flow. Right. So this is also a quite interesting feature that has been introduced in flow designer. All right. So the subflow is created test subflow. You can see our subflow is started displaying here. And now I will show you the next feature that is a uh, stages support for flow designer. All right, so I will open one of the catalog item request and we will see how we can set the stages in those flow which is already created in flow designer. All right, so previously we used to set using set values, right? So now what we can do is like we can go to our this view diagram view diagram view of this catalog item flow. 
and you can see there are multiple activities or actions displaying here and you can see we have this plus button here and you can add the stages using our diagram view very easily right you can see we can add the stages here we can select the stages which stage this flow is currently in all right so this way you can add the stages for flow designer very easily previously you you have to set the stages using set values okay so now let's move to our another feature that is flow priorities so flow priorities uh, generally uh, it is set as medium for most of the for all the flows generally and this requirement generally don't come but they have introduced a uh, flow priorities for utah utah version so let's see how we can see this flow priorities all right so let's move to our flow designer yeah so we have to go under flow administration settings as soon as i will click on settings we will see the settings record displaying here Okay, so we have clicked on this uh, settings and now we will see the list of setting records displaying here. So now we will see this flow priority which is set for most of the flows. You can see these are the flows default SLA flow and SLA notification and escalation flow. Here you can see for all the flow priority is set as medium. So it will execute on its own on medium priority so we can see there is low medium high priority for flow designer okay so this will be utilized uh, in very rare case but uh, they have introduced this feature so i had to tell you all right so let's move to our another feature uh, i think uh, flow designer is done so let's move further for our authentication security and mobile all right so under authentication we have identity center under security mobile mobile we have multi instance switching improved experiences all right so this is quite interesting thing uh, identity center which service now has introduced so i will show you what this entity centers is all about and i will as well as tell you about this mobile thing uh, improved experience and multi instance switching but i will not be able to show you the demo because that is on uh, mobile features all right so i will just explain you what what changes has been done on mobile view so currently i will tell you about identity center in instance how you can view this identity center details all right so let us close these all things and now let's try to see what is identity center so identity center generally track active sessions login history and registered devices for this uh, details to be viewed in service now instance so we have to enable the plugin that is identity center all right so i will show you this plugin name so this this is a really nice feature which is introduced in Utah. So we will see what is this plugin. So you can see this is the ServiceNow Identity Center. Uh, this is already installed in my system. And this, this plugin is required to install uh, for the instance which you have upgraded already. Uh, get, if you are already getting your Utah version, so that time I think you will get pre-installed uh, identity center all right so let's see how these details can be viewed so I will show you so you have to click on this user profile and now you can see there is a related link displaying here view identity center so I will click on this view identity center 
okay now you can see the active session so there is already active session going on uh, for my login you can see so these are these are the details uh, displaying here all right you can see time of login browser ip address session id and you can see the login history as well here right so this is quite interesting one right so you can see the active sessions and when you have logged in last so you can see all that details and which browser you are logged in which version all right so yeah so this is all about identity center so next i am going to explain you about mobile so mobile there there were there is three two features they have launched in utah so one is like uh, improved experiences where we can uh, work on themes and our app will be working online offline as well as we can upload uh, upload some attachments or we can upload uh, anything in our uh, mobile ui suppose some image we have to upload or post multiple images or attachments so we can upload uh, that in using mobile experiences and as well as there is a provision to uh, uh, use input forms and we can use record section functions under mobile experiences all right so next is multi instance switching so no more uh, it is required to log out or log in for your mobile ui you can just uh, use the icon in your a mobile app where you can see in upper left and you can just uh, switch your instance from one instance to another and uh, the notification will get generated and you can click on uh, any uh, notifications which you will be displaying for any of the instance and you will be re redirected to that particular instance using that particular notification all right so this is all about mobile feature that is been introduced in utah so let's talk about other uh, place that is app engine table builder so these all things the changes which will be available that is part of app engine so we will move and see what are those mapping fields description and schema view all right so let's move and see how we can display those all things in our app engine studio all right so let's move so let me open my existing uh, application uh, okay and i will click on my data import which i was trying to do previously you can see previously i have loaded one of the excel access file here and there there has been two columns added column 1 column 2 all right so there is a field which is added right and you can see it was uploaded so now let's click on map to target so i will click here and you can see we can map our uh, mapping using our mapping properties and if we have selected uh, the target table here you can auto map your fields using uh, the fields which is provided in your column so you can map your fields here using our mapping properties so here you can see there is a field mapping started for this particular table from the excel which i have loaded right you can see and we can set some value test 1 or test 2 here and this will be mapped to this particular table my hello all right so this is this is the mapping features which they have introduced under app engine studio for uh for to map this uh, when you are uploading your spreadsheet and you are getting lot of columns right so at that point of time you can map those fields very easily suppose you have to uh, move uh, from one instance to another you have to move your incident list of records 
so you can move it very easily you can just export and import using this app engine studio and everything will be mapped automatically and the data will be mapped and uh, displayed accordingly all right so these are, these are the purpose for uh, mapping uh, mapping of fields under app engine studio so this this is a quite interesting feature as well and this will be utilized a lot so now we will be talking about uh, the table builder where descriptions has been added for the table which you want to select all right so suppose uh, we will leave from this form and uh, suppose we will try to add more data here so suppose i have clicked on data and you can see there is a option started displaying create a blank table and i will continue with it so i will open from extensible table which table you want to use so now here here comes the thing and you can see predefined tables started displaying on the suggestions with the description you can see task a base table that provides fields for core applications configuration items you can see the description loaded with the table name so these these details are uh, displayed most commonly tables that are extended right suppose asset service configuration item task so these are the most recommended tables uh, through which the uh, current tables are extended right so the this these are the features for table description that has been added while you are selecting the table so this is the feature which is introduced in uta version all right so next is our uh, schema view so that is the read only view of a table uh, and this table uh, will be displaying a schema when the tables are linked with each other with multiple tables so you can see suppose i will go back suppose i will cancel everything here and now you can see here we are having some data and i will click here and now you can see we have uh, some data schema here right so you can see again here fields and schema is displayed here you can click on this schema and view the table how your table looks like you can click under schema and you can see the schema view of your table which is added in your data view all right so it will be displaying on multiple relationship if there would be more tables that is linked with this current table all right so you you will be able to see uh, more of a tree structure if suppose there are more tables linked with this current table all right so this is the use of schema view under uh the app engine studio where you will try to create uh, many more applications uh, within your organization right so this is all about app engine so further we have integration hub import feature in uh, uta whatever they have introduced so they have uh, provided extended support for csv file support where you can upload the data for csv file and as well as this auto map fields can be used on on this table or the excel which is uploaded and the target table where you have to upload the data and other feature is mapping fields alphabetically previously uh, the field was not arranged in a proper format so they have provided the a mapping of fields alphabetically all right so let's move and see how this works so let's close this app engine studio and now let's move to integration hub so this is our integration hub import so this is also new ui all right so here we can see there are some uh, data mapping already created in my instance and i will try to create new integration suppose i will add learn it test okay here also i will add learn it right so we will save and continue 
and now you can see what I was uh, explaining you about this CSV file support. So you can see I have clicked on file and now you can see uh, there is CSV file support. Previously only Excel support was available under this integration hub import. But in Utah CSV file support has been started and we can uh, upload any CSV file here and we can map the data from the existing target table or you can create a new table where you can map your data using CSV file. All right. So this is the way you how you can utilize CSV file and you can map the data. So let's move to our another feature that is uh, mapping property where you can auto map where you have provision to auto map the field in your instance. So let's try to see the existing one. So suppose map to target. So this was the user user table uh, where I have I have this name, user ID, email, phone, and this was automatically mapped with the existing user existing user table. And and another feature was uh, like uh, the field has to be displayed alphabetically. So this is the feature. Previously, this fields was not coming correctly. So this fields was coming anonym uh, like alternatively suppose anything can come here name, city, company. So this active flag was below and this building was above. So it was not in a proper format, but they have made this in a proper format in alphabetical form so that people don't get confused while mapping the fields. All right. So this was the source configuration. This was the file which is used. So if you want, I can use it again. I will download it. So this is downloaded and now I will try to create new one. Create new integration. Map the user. Map the user okay so i will click save and continue and now i will click on file excel i will go to downloads i will click on sys user Okay, now I will go to map target table. So target table here, it will ask to select user, this user and I will click on save and I will click on this record and you can see the mapping property. No data mapping yet. So we will click on add all fields and now you can see Map to target. So, yeah. So, this is the button which is hidden here. Auto map button. See, I have clicked on add all fields, but you can see we can auto map here. So, this is the feature which is introduced, and we will click on auto map. So, it will map the matching fields, which, which fields it will get mapped. So you can see five fields are auto mapped. So there is four field, but name is mapped to two field. Okay. You can, see, you can see. Yeah. So this mobile phone is mapped to mobile phone and business phone both. That's why five name it is showing. So no problem that you can 
remove either from mobile phone either from business phone so i will remove it from business phone and now i will click save so this auto map feature is done and this is the alphabetically fields are displayed so this these are all the changes which is done inside integration hub import in Utah version all right So I think these are all the features of Uta release which is important for us to know as we are the developers and there are many more features in Uta version which I will create separate video. Alright, so this is all about uh, my information uh, related to Uta version of ServiceNow. So please provide your comments if you have any questions, doubts or queries related to this session. For more information, please visit the description section under this video. Thanks for hearing me out. Stay tuned for more videos. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel Learn IT.